Hello there, welcome back. I'm Dave from Chase the Summit, and today we're gonna to be going through all of my favorite things from the past year of making content for this YouTube channel, on my podcast, and in my general life, running, listening to music, just everything. I'm gonna to try to cover everything, all the things that I've really enjoyed using for the past year as kind of a year-end cap thing. I'm not gonna call this a gift guide or anything because I don't wanna make you buy stuff, but if you do end up buying stuff, it's all linked down below, obviously. So with that, let's get into it. I don't even know where to start. Like I said, this is gonna be kind of a catch-all video and I'm including a lot of stuff. You're gonna find things from cameras from making YouTube videos, shoes for running on trails and roads, hydration, powders, bottles, uh, earbuds, just about everything that I enjoy using and I'm kind of a nerdy guy. So if you fall into the bucket of enjoying tech and GPS watches and running, you might find this video entertaining. Otherwise, uh, I don't know what you're doing here, but stick around. Before we move on, I do wanna give a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video, and that's going to be Bombas. Bombas is primarily a sock brand, but they've become one of my favorite brands of socks, not just for running, but also for casual wear. And these are some of my favorites right here. They're, these are the running quarter sock. They're awesome, super comfortable, and in the cold weather, they're actually pretty warm as well. The nice thing about Bombas socks and these running socks in general is they have these like specifically targeted comfort zones where they have a little bit more cushioning and that makes them incredibly comfortable to wear and does prevent chafing. I've been wearing these all the time. I ran uh, 50K in them a couple of weeks ago. What I really like about Bombas is not only do they make great socks, but they also do good. They've been donating one pair of socks for every pair of socks that are purchased by you. So if you're in the market for a new pair of running socks or a friend or family would like some for this holiday coming up, up, check out the link in the description down below and use discount code CHASE20 at checkout for 20% off your order. That's 20% off all your entire order. That's a pretty good deal. Okay, so the first category of things that I wanna talk about in this video, you might not even care about if you're not into this kind of thing, but this is going to be content creation tools. These are tools that I use basically on a daily basis to make these YouTube videos, to make the podcast. If you haven't seen, I have a podcast as well. Link is in the description down below and just general tech that I use in a day-to-day -day environment. The first product that I'm gonna talk about is kind of the staple behind the scenes here. The thing that helps me get all this done is going to be this thing off to the side of the screen here, my M1 Max MacBook Pro. This is the 16 inch M1 Max MacBook Pro. Comes in at about $3,499, I think. It might be on sale by now. But this thing is an absolute beast. I'm not gonna go into all the nitty gritty details about it, but for me, it makes my job a lot easier. I edit every single YouTube video on this thing. I throw tons of 4K footage at it, GoPro footage, phone footage, and it chews through all of it without batting an eye. Has incredibly awesome battery life. I can take it on an airplane and edit videos, be on a train and edit videos or write a script, and the battery lasts all day. So I'm not gonna go way in the weeds on computers because that's not really what this channel is all about, but just know this is my absolute favorite computer that I've ever owned. Uh, it's a lot of money, it's pretty expensive, but for me it's been worth it and it makes my life as a content creator on YouTube a lot easier. And on the topic of Apple products, I think I have to talk about this as well because it basically lives in my pocket 24 hours a day. This is the iPhone 14 Pro. And if you haven't noticed, like, 50% of the footage that comes out on my YouTube channel comes from the cameras on the back of this phone. This phone takes incredibly good video. Like, the video quality on this does rival some of my mirrorless cameras. Uh, you can't even tell a lot of times that when I'm doing like a running video and I've got a close-up shot of a watch, it comes from this, even though the background's blurry and the quality looks amazing, it's coming from a phone and it's always the iPhone 14 Pro. And so far, it's treated me well. Again, very expensive. What, what is this, like a thousand bucks? Um, but you can finance it. I guess that makes it a little bit better, I guess. But the beauty for me, sticking in the Apple ecosystem with the MacBook Pro and the iPhone 14 Pro, is that after I shoot some video on my phone, I can airdrop it over to the computer for editing, and it just makes life so easy. On the topic of content creation and podcasting, which is kind of new to me, is this thing. The Rode Rodecaster Pro 2. I invested in this a couple of months ago when it came out, and I use this for all of my podcasting. And what's nice about this 
is that you don't need a computer. You can hit this big, nice record button here, start talking, make your podcast, and it's all self-sufficient. It's got the effects built in, the noise gates and everything. Sounds incredible. It sounds completely finished after you're done recording, and there's no more work involved. And again, it makes my life easier as somebody who makes content on a daily basis. So the Rodecaster Pro 2 is not cheap. Again, this comes in at about $800 here in the USA, uh, but I found that it's worth the money. And if you do have multiple people on your podcast, you can connect up to four microphones on here and four headphones. You can bring in remote callers uh, from your iPhone for, through Bluetooth or even through your computer. And it's just awesome. I use it on my live streams. I use it for my podcast. Yeah, that's about all I'm gonna say about the Rodecaster Pro 2. Next up, we're gonna talk about my backpack, cause why not? This is the Peak Design 20 liter everyday backpack. And my wife bought this for me for Christmas or my birthday this year. This is easily the best backpack ever. I love it so much. It does so many things. So the, the best thing about this backpack is this pouch in the back here. Uh, you can stick your laptop in here. I've got a tablet in here. I've got my mouse in here, my pens, all my little gadgets and things like that. But if you're a camera person like me or somebody on YouTube, you've also got this big zippered pouch on the side where you can actually put your cameras in here or headphones. I've got some headphones in here right now. All of my cameras are in use right now, so they're not in there. But I transport everything around using this backpack and it's been super durable. It's well thought out. Um, I just really like it. I also like the look of it. It doesn't look like a a big nerdy backpack. It just kind of blends in and uh, I, I like that. The Peak Designs 20 liter everyday backpack is not cheap. Again, it's kind of the trend here. Uh, this is like a $300 backpack, I think, but you can catch them on, on sale occasionally. So check out their website. Again, link down below. This one won't be an affiliate link or anything, um, but they make really nice stuff. So I would recommend checking it out if you're into cameras or you just like really nice backpacks. I just traveled to Texas with this thing and this is basically the only bag that I took with me. It was big enough to put clothes in here, carry my, my laptop and tablet, put a camera in there, a microphone. Um, pretty awesome. Now let's talk about cameras because I use a lot of them. I'm actually using two of them right now. Got the overhead and the one that I'm talking to. Um, I've been using the Sony FX3 camera. That's the one I'm talking to right now. I'll have some B-roll of it because I can't really film that camera holding it, uh, but it is a amazing camera. Again, very expensive, but makes my life easy because it doesn't overheat. It's got incredible image quality. The files coming out of it are just ready to go. I don't have to do much in post to make them look good. Uh, it's a great camera. On the other hand, above me, I have the Sony FX30. Again, I'll put some B-roll over this and I've been really enjoying that camera as well. As a combo, these two are great for what I do here in the studio. And now when I'm out of the studio and I'm doing like a vlog or um, I'm just running around with a camera, I'll always be using using the GoPro Hero 11 Black. It's become my go-to running camera. And I've got a whole bunch of action cameras. Hang on. These are all action cameras that I've tried in the past and they're all good. I mean, there's really not a bad camera here. I've got the uh, 360 cameras. I've got the small action cameras, the older GoPros, some, some similar looking uh, Insta360 cameras. These are all really good. But what I like about GoPros for quick turnaround stuff, like what I do with a, you know, a race vlog or something, I like the fact that I can basically film with my GoPro, take the SD card out, edit right away. There's no additional processes. It's just reliable and quick and the files look great. And not only that, the audio quality from the GoPro Hero 11 Black is also really good. And the final piece of content creation stuff that I wanna talk about is going to be something I don't even have with me right now. It's actually in my basement at home and that is my server rack. So my server rack is based of a Synology NAS. That's a network attached storage unit. So Synology is a brand that makes these kind of small servers for content creators or small businesses. And I use one that's called a DS1821 Plus, I believe. It runs for like a thousand bucks which is expensive and that's without hard drives. So you have to buy hard drives and put them inside of the thing. 
but for me, it's become a really effective tool for all of my video needs. I'm really proud of my server rack, which is why I included it in this video, and it's become a crucial part of my workflow to be able to just grab videos that I filmed a year ago for like short clips, and I can get it really fast over the network with 10 gig ethernet. Uh, it's kind of a game changer. So uh, yeah, if you're in a unique position where you need a, a big uh, giant hard drive, check out the Synology DS1821+. Plus. Okay, now that we've gotten through the content creation side of things, let's move into apparel. This is specifically apparel that I use for running. My running activities will include things like hot summer runs or as it were today, super cold December 20 degree Fahrenheit runs, which are not as fun. The first piece of apparel that I'm gonna talk about is what's on my head right now, the Chase the Summit Ridgeline Trucker Hat. Do you have one yet? If you don't, you can get 20% off one of these things by using the discount code in the description down below. Go check it out because it's an awesome hat. No, seriously, this is my favorite hat, hat ever. Oh no, my head's kind of red from wearing it. This is a Boko Designs um, technical trucker hat. That's the, the, the style of hat. And what I like about it is it's not a trucker hat. It doesn't have that big foam front to it. It's not like super tall and it's got kind of a low profile. It's also incredibly comfortable. I love wearing this for runs because it wicks moisture away. It doesn't get overly wet or heavy. And it's just, it's my favorite hat ever, which is why I endorse it by putting my branding on it. Okay, next piece of apparel is something that's new to me. This is from a brand called Soar, S-O-A-R. This is the Soar Winter Anorak Softshell. Yes, that's a long name. Uh, this is a brand that's new to me. They reached out a little while ago. They wanted to see if I wanted to check out some of their technical pieces for activities. And this has become one of my favorite pieces to run in in the winter. So the material used here is a soft shell material, which means that it actually repels wind, it blocks the wind, and it's re it repels water. So if a little bit of rain gets on it, it'll just kind of beat up and fall off. This thing also comes in this really awesome orange color, which is great for visibility when you're running. For me, I run a lot of times after the sun goes down and I like wearing bright colors. This meets that criteria. It's got a bunch of pockets. So I've got one big pocket here that could store a phone or some gels or something. And then in the back, there's a giant pocket that I can put my phone or any other items that I might have with me. Really like this. It also has a hood. If it gets really cold, I can pop this up and it does zipper up to, to cinch it all down even tighter if it's raining or it's really crazy out. Uh, yeah, the Soar Winter Anorak. This is, $338, unfortunately it's a little bit expensive, but I found the quality to be really good and uh, I've been really digging this so far. Okay, next piece of apparel. This one's one of my favorites. This is the Outdoor Research Helium 2. This is a rain shell uh, that's kind of combines as a rain or wind shell for rain or wind protection. And I've had this jacket for years, uh, probably six, five or six years. What's great about it is it's incredibly lightweight, comes in at like five grams and it wads up to the size of like a baseball for storing in your pack when you're not using it. I find this to be an awesome like insurance piece. So if I'm going out and the weather looks a little skeptical or like it might go south, um, I throw this in my bag because why not? It doesn't weigh much, it packs down really small and it's pretty affordable. This comes in at about $129. The Outdoor Research Helium 2 is not something I'd wanna wear like for a very long time because it is a little bit stifling. It does get a little sweaty after a while, but in a pinch, if it does start to rain, this jacket is awesome to have in my bag. Now that we've talked outerwear, let's talk about some base layers. Uh, one shirt that I've been really enjoying lately, uh, shameless plug yet again, is the Path Projects CTS collab shirt, link down below. Wow, that was some real real influencer stuff right there. So this, this shirt is genuinely one that I really like. It's made with a, uh, a tensile fiber. So it's a blend of uh, tensile and polyester. I think there's even a little bit of cotton in here, uh, but it's incredibly comfortable. This shirt feels like cotton, but it's got the technical fabric that allows it to wick moisture away and dry out quickly at the same time. So you get the comfort of cotton, but all the technical advantages of more of a more technical shirt. The Path Projects CTS shirt is available for $42, uh, and they are running low. So check out the link. Check out the link down below. See what sizes are in stock. 
But uh, yeah, this is one of my faves. A great base layer, good for warm weather runs. Uh, it's a good one. Next up, let's talk pants. So I've got a couple of pair, pairs of pants that I really like. These are gonna be hard to show on camera, but I'll show some B-roll of me running in these. These are the Lululemon Surge Hybrid Pants. These run for about $128 on the Lululemon website. These have quickly become my favorite winter running pants. Uh, there's something about them. They're, they act like tights, like running tights in the winter, but they're not as form-fitting as tights, but they're as breathable and flexible and comfortable as tights, which is why I like them. Another nice feature about the Surge Hybrid Pants is that they have a big phone pocket in the back here with kind of a lip that goes over the top of them. So you can stick your phone in here, uh, big pocket there, and then the lip kind of protects it from the phone falling out, which is something I particularly like. There's also a zip, zipper pocket on the right hip here. Um, but these are my like everyday running pants. Um, you'll see these in a lot of videos if I'm out in cooler weather. And on the topic of bottoms, let's talk shorts for those warmer months. These are my absolute favorite shorts. Um, they're probably not available in this specific design because if, as you can see, there's actually a Western States 100 logo right there. Uh, I got these when I was out with Hoka at the Western States 100 and I fell in love with these shorts. So these are the rabbit shredder shorts. They run about $78. What I find special about these is that they have pockets all around the waist, like completely all 360 degrees around the waist are pockets. This is huge because I could actually store almost all of my stuff in here and go for a really long run with just these shorts. I'll have my car keys in here, my phone, uh, some gels, some snacks, even my GoPro, I can fit in one of these pockets and go for a run without needing a hydration vest. Now let's talk sunglasses. Yes, sunglasses. Uh, if you ever watch any of my videos and I'm running in the sun, I'll be wearing these. These are my favorite, all time favorite sunglasses. These are the Roca Barton sunglasses. These are made in Austin, Texas, here in the USA. Uh, they run about $180, which is, I'll be honest, it feels kind of expensive for what they are, uh, but they are really good running glasses. It's because they are insanely light. You kind of forget they're on your face because of how light they are. And they've got some really nice features for comfort, like inside the nose here, there's these little rubber bits that kind of grip your nose. And then the same thing on the side here for gripping the side of your head. It's unfortunate that they're kind of expensive. I wish they were like, you know, $50, but I really like them. So I might buy another pair. Moving right along through more running specific stuff. I want to talk about shoes. This is going to be, it's going to be a little bit complicated. So first I want to talk about trail running shoes. And the first shoe I'm going to talk about here is going to be the Ultra Mont Blanc Boa. These shoes I have absolutely fallen in love with. Previously, I was wearing the Ultra Mont Blanc, the non-Boa version that had a standard lacing system. And I did like those shoes, but I ran into issues with them when it came to fit. For some reason, I could not lock down the upper and get a really snug fit on my foot. So I would get some heel slipping and things like that. But I did try to find some workarounds and I would end up uh, lacing my shoes funny, but I did end up liking them quite a bit. They are super springy. They have a lot of cushion. They have great traction. And I ended up running my last 100 mile ultra marathon in the original Mont Blanc. These shoes are essentially the exact same as the original Ultra Mont Blanc. So it's the same midsole, the same outsole, the same traction. But the benefit to the Mont Blanc Boa is that they have this new Boa system. As you can see here, there are two knobs on the side. And if I twist them, this really, satisfying click. So these knobs allow you to dial in your fit uh, just like you would on like a ski boot or something like that. And basically you push down on them to lock them. And when you twist them, they pull in some of the lace material, which tightens it down on your foot. So really like the Ultra Mont Blanc Boa. They are very expensive though. Sorry, everything's expensive. These are about $220. I think that's the price for these. Um, but they are 
really awesome shoes and I've been really enjoying my time with them and they've proven to be pretty durable, which is unlike a lot of ultra shoes out there. Now, even though I really like the Ultra Mont Blanc Boa for trail running, it is not my only favorite shoe. I basically have a tie this year for my favorite shoe. And that is because I really like the Hoka Mafate Speed 4. So the Hoka Mafate Speed 4 is a really nice shoe. It's very light, it's got a ton of cushion, and it feels really fast. And for my foot, I've got like a really wide foot, the Hoka Mafate Speed 4 fit me really well, which is great because in the past, Hoka brand as a whole hasn't like really been a great fit for my foot, but for some reason, the Mafate Speed 4 fit me really well, even in the midfoot, which has been a challenge for me with most brands. Moving right along on the topic of shoes, I wanna talk about my favorite road running shoe this year, and that is the Ultra Vanish Carbon. This is a $240 shoe, which is a very expensive road running shoe but it does have a carbon plate inside. So it does bump up that price quite a bit. That happens in just about every brand when you're shopping for carbon plated shoes. These shoes for me have been very special. What's different about them, like I said, is they are a carbon plated shoe, but they're not the type of carb carbon plated shoe that are only designed for speed work or for uh, races or for you know saving for race day. You can use these as an everyday trainer and that's what I've been doing. This is actually a new pair because I wore out my old pair. My old pair had like 400 miles on them. These only have about 50 miles on them so you can see that the outsole is holding up pretty well so far. And let me tell you, these shoes are extremely rewarding when you're on the run because it feels like if you hit them just right, you get a lot of payback from every stride. It makes me feel way faster than I actually am because I am not the fastest runner in the world, especially on the road. Okay, now that we've talked about shoes and all that stuff, let's talk about hydration. I'm not gonna go too far on hydration. So this year, I've been doing a lot of my running in the Solid Solomon Advanced Skin 12 Set Vest, Hydration Vest, which I don't have with me, but I'll show you some B-roll of that from my last race. Uh, it's a great vest, but it came out years ago, and honestly, I'm not in love with it. There's probably a better one out there, so I'm not gonna include it in this video. What I will include in this video, though, is these bottles. <laughs> of all the things, these bottles. The, this is the Camelback Quick Stow 17 ounce flask. I think it's 17 ounces. And what I really like about these, is that they have an on and off valve. So because I wear a Solomon uh, running vest, it came with Solomon flasks. And first of all, they broke after a while, the caps actually cracked and started leaking. But other than that, the, uh, the, the bite valves on the front here, they would actually end up leaking in some situations. So for me, what I like to do is wear two of these up front on my hydration vest for going on long runs and things like that. But if, I, if I'm going on an extremely long run, if I'm heading off into the mountains on a hot day or something, I wanna bring three of these. So I have two up front and then I take my third and I stow it in the back of my running vest in the backpack area. And the benefit to that is if I get to a water source, I can actually filter water into here and then drink it on the go or have extra water to kind of camel my Camelback bottle and add more water to my overall kit for longer gaps in between water sources. And that's where these shine because of that on and off valve, basically you twist the top here and you can turn it on so it's, you know, you can drink from it or you can turn it off and seal it. And now I can put this in the back of my running vest and it's not gonna leak all over me. On the topic of hydration though, I wanna talk about a couple of other things. Two brands that I use exclusively for hydration mix or electrolyte mix. Uh, I've used a brand called Liquid IV, and this is by far one of my favorite products for hydration. This is a really low calorie option for hydration if you just want electrolytes. So there's sodium in here, there's magnesium, there's all of the electrolytes, uh, and this comes in a bunch of different flavors. The version I like the best is called Lemon Lime, and they use a, a special technology, I don't know how special it is, but it's called CC, CTT, and it's supposed to get the electrolytes into your system a little bit quicker. What about a higher calorie option for race day? Well, in those environments, I lean on a product called Tailwind. And Tailwind is a different kind of animal than Liquid IV. This has about 200 calories per serving. It's also got all the electric lights in there and a bunch of sugar and sodium, things like that. And this stuff is awesome for race day. Just in my last 50K, I basically drank this exclusively for the entire race. 
I never found myself feeling low energy or like I was bonking or anything like that. And I've used this stuff for years. Tailwind has been kind of a staple for me uh, when it comes to hydration on race day. And I like to keep these individual packets around because they're easy to throw in my running vest and pull them out dump into my running flask and continue on the move. And that is all the hydration things I really like this year. Let's move right into the next category, probably why you clicked on this video. GPS running watches. So as you know, primarily on this channel, I talk about a lot of GPS or multi-sport watches. And so it's really hard for me to pick one winner for my favorite watch of 2022. The, the watch I kind of went to for all of my runs, uh, but I am going to talk about three different watches because they all won me over in different aspects. The first one is going to be the Garmin Epix Gen 2. This was Garmin's first attempt at an AMOLED display watch with all the functionality of the Phoenix series. So you get full mapping and navigation, you get offline music storage, you get all the crazy build quality with titanium bezel and a sapphire display, incredibly scratch resistant, high build quality, looks really nice, has a great display, and by far one of my favorite devices that launched this year. It came out in January, so it just made the cut to be a 2022 release, uh, but I am gonna give, I'm gonna say this is one of my favorite watches this year, and one I continue to reach for because it's one that I really enjoy using. However, even though the Garmin Epix Gen 2 is one of my favorites, the watch I ended up wearing the most this year was the Garmin Foreigner 955. Because the Garmin Foreigner 955 is about half the price of this Garmin Epix Gen 2, but it's got like 98% of the functionality. You get offline mapping, you get music storage, you get basically all of the same features, and what, what really sells me about this watch is its form factor. It's about the same size as the Epix Gen 2 as you can see here, but it's lighter. It's way lighter because it's made out of plastic. And not only is it lighter, it also feels lower profile on the wrist even though it's like almost the same size. For some reason this watch just feels a little bit more aerodynamic. It just kind of gets out of the way where I'm, where I'm wearing this. And honestly, the fact that it's plastic means that if you scratch it, you're not going to notice it as much, where if you scratch the metal on the Epix Gen 2, you'll see a nice big shiny streak on there. But because plastic is the same color all the way through on the 955, it's less noticeable. You probably notice a third watch on the table, and that's because I've also got the Apple Watch Ultra on the table here. And I got to say, the Apple Watch Ultra was probably one of the most anticipated, most exciting releases of 2022. And I gotta say, it is one of the most impressive devices that Apple has ever released. Uh, I love the build quality of this thing. The battery life took a big step in the right direction. Still not on the same level as something like the garments I have here, but it's a different purpose watch. This watch is basically an iPhone on your wrist. You can make phone calls from it. You can stream music from the internet from it. You can you know, send and receive text messages. Uh, it does so much. It, it's so powerful. It's so interesting looking, in my opinion. The GPS is very accurate. The heart rate sensor is dead on. And Apple is going to continue to, you know, add firmware updates and improvements over time. Uh, and they're already doing that. We're already seeing improvements. The Apple Watch Ultra is definitely something very exciting. And I do want to mention it in, in this video as one of my favorite things this year, because it definitely is one of my favorite things. And you know me, I could go on and on about GPS watches for hours, but I'm going to cut it short there and just say the Garmin 400 955, the Epix Gen 2, and the Apple Watch Ultra are my top picks this year when it comes to GPS and multi-sport watches. With GPS watches out of the way, let's talk about more running electronics. And specifically, I want to talk about earbuds. So I've got two I almost dropped that one. <laughs> I've got two pairs of earbuds here, and these are both my favorite this year. First up are the Beats Fit Pro earbuds. These, I will say, are my favorite running earbuds. They fit my ears really well, they don't fall out, they sound really good, and they integrate with Apple products seamlessly as if they were an Apple product. You get active noise cancellation, you get transparency mode, great audio quality, and because it's got these wing tips in there, they never fall out of my ears. They have a very secure fit. However, we do have another tie on our hands here because while the Beats Fit Pros are my favorite running earbuds, they're not my favorite, you know, everyday casual wear earbuds because they do get a little bit fatiguing because of that little hook in the ear. And for that, 
I like the Apple AirPods Pro 2s. These have become my everyday carry. I bring these everywhere with me. Uh, they go in my car, they go in my pocket, they go to work with me. I take my meetings, I mean, talking through them, using the microphone and you know, the, listening through them. They are easily my favorite earbuds and it's just because they're so convenient. They have wireless charging. They'll charge via the mag safe connector uh, from the Apple Watch. They have great sound quality. The audio quality has gotten way better on these compared to the old AirPod Pros. And they have the best transparency mode of any earbud I've ever tried. It almost feels like you're not wearing earbuds at all. So Apple AirPod Pro 2s, Beats Fit Pros, two of my favorite earbuds this year. Let's move on. Okay, next up I wanna talk about headlamps. And this is gonna be a quick one. Uh, so you might've seen a video I posted a while ago about the BioLite 750 headlamp. That is still my favorite head headlamp to date. However, it's a couple of years old now, so I'm not really gonna highlight it in this video. I still use it all the time. However, lately I have been drawn to this headlamp for a few reasons, and it's kind of become my do it all, bring everywhere headlamp. This is the, hang on, it's the NU, yeah, NU25UL. I hope I got that right. So this little headlamp is pretty unique because as you can see, there's not much to it. There's basically the headlamp unit up front here. Then there's a shock cord that makes up the band that goes around your head. And then in the back, there's a little toggle that you squeeze with your fingers and then you can pull to tighten up on your head. This thing weighs nothing and it also packs down extremely small. You can see you, put, you can stick this in just about any backpack or pocket and it takes up very little space. This becomes like my go everywhere emergency flashlight. This is a great backup flashlight to have with you. Even if you're going on an adventure in the daytime, this is great to have in your you know, backpack or vest if you're going on a hike or a long trail run, just in case, because it's so small, why not bring it with you anyways? So the Nikkor NU25UL projects a 400 lumen beam, which is not the brightest flashlight in the world. However, it's plenty bright for running in the dark in most situations and certainly plenty bright for hiking and things like that. The NU25UL is also IP66 rated, so it's waterproof. You can go for a run in the rain and you don't have to worry about it. And it is rechargeable. So if you open up this little flap on the side here, you're greeted with a USB type C connector so you can plug it in and charge it back up. And I don't know why, but I love the simplicity of this little thing. And it's also pretty affordable at around 40 bucks. So. Overall, it's kind of a winning package for me, and I highly recommend checking out the Nightcore NU25UL if you're in the market, especially for a secondary or a backup headlamp. This is great for that. Okay, friends, we have reached the end of this video. This has been kind of a long one. I've been filming forever, and I hope this edits down to something that's actually enjoyable to watch. If you found this video fun or entertaining, please consider giving me a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel down below because that really helps me out. And if you're planning on picking up any of the products I showed off in this video, check out the links down below because they do help support this channel and they cost nothing extra to you. So you might as well use them. And on that note, I would love to hear from you in the comments down below. Do you use any of these products that I talked about in this video? And if you do, let me know. And if you don't, let me know what you use instead. Do you use a Coros watch? Do you use a different earbud? Do you use a different supplement? Let me know in the comments down below. I would love to hear from you. And that wraps up my favorite things this year. There was a lot of things and hopefully this video made sense. Anyways, I've been talking for way too long and I'm going to let you get back to your life now. Okay. I'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.